Well, it looks like the agenda's pretty well packed full, and we've got a busy morning. Oh, we have a night for Oh, I didn't tell her. She called after you. I guess it's the Blue Cross Blue Shield ladies that are breaking. No. At 9.30. And we think Rule might still show up. Maybe. Sort of. Payday's Thursday. You need me to come. I need two of you. No. No. Who are you? And Jane will be gone. And Jane will be gone. You're going to be gone, well. And we won't meet next Monday. But we will meet on Tuesday. Yeah, if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. 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 Might have needed it. Sorry about last week. It's fine. I remembered it about 11 o'clock. I didn't hear it then. <laughs> <laughs> Going back into session. We're yeah, going. we're in session. Yes. I uh, got some personnel items to run by you. Okay. The executive session, probably. Mm How -hmm. long? 20 minutes. Okay. I make a motion to go to executive session, but I'll let the personnel. Uh, second. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We're in executive session for 20 minutes. Okay, we'll, for another 10 minutes. Yeah, I think we'll go back into executive say, session for 10 minutes. Now I'll let the person know. Uh, second motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. We have, uh, last year we sent PJ to this uh, leadership golden belt. Um, I think it's a pretty good program. Second Precinct on EMS standby for Peg. Oh, is this? <laughs> We're going somewhere again. Second Precinct on EMS, leaders from the corner on 18th Friday and Max now. Got a diabetic unresponsive. Anyhow, these, I, I, uh, I think this is somewhere in, um, Every county has a leadership program or something like this. And Misty. The the most valuable part of we're trying a new uh, a new radio system that actually our, it goes to our phone. And we're trying to figure out a way to to. Uh, not have to keep on buying five hundred dollar pagers. So cool. And automatically, really? the dispatch automatically goes to your phone. And those are good phones. I got one. I've dropped it several times. But anyhow, uh, I, I think the the most valuable part of this that it, it teaches um, your administrative people uh, it gives them a wider wider view of how they. Um, how they touch every different facet of the, the community's operation. Is this one of the good visit if communities have field trips out and see other things? Yeah, they go to different um, it's limited to so many people or something, is that right? Mm -hmm. TJ uh, gave real favorable comments about it. This is when we I think Farrah went. Farrah's done it, yeah. And uh, who else went that year? Anyhow they always come back just must yeah, be some big brainwashing thing. Well, I, I, I think folks, world, folks kind of see their own little, their own little inner circle and what their operation is. But uh, once their eyes are opened up to um, the bigger picture, it, it really helps in, in in their future. What is the cost? Three fifty. Well, it's not, it's a lot of weekends too, it's not all the time about work, it's part of the part time work. Uh, it doesn't say what days those are, what, whether they're during the day. Some during the day, I think, it's all of them. Yeah. 
weekends or Fridays. But one of them Fridays. includes a, um, uh, a weekend in Wichita, which is covered, the motel and the food and everything is covered. That's part of the overall fee. That's the 13th and 15th of November. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's weekend one. But I, I don't know that. Well, that's a Friday. A Thursday, a Thursday, so most of Thursday, 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 mostly Thursday, 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 yeah. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Motion okay. carried. The only other thing I had mostly was a question. Do we have a credit card needed that that we can, that's kind of like a, not necessarily a departmental credit card, but a different one? Hello? Yes. Uh, I'll have to call you back. The problem is, is, is kind of finishing up this room. I, uh, I went over to Hodge and, and, and I, I, I visited with uh, the representative from Dirks on, on chairs and, and I can get him over to Hodge at way less price. But, uh, but with buying all the other items, I'm, I'm most good about office max. And I tried to get him to even give, uh, print me out an invoice and then I can turn it in. No, they can't do that. I'm thinking. I want to buy. I want to buy all these chairs, and you, you guys can't. But that's. The, I mean, it, it, they don't give the flexibility to their store operators. They just they got a, they got a narrow window of how they can operate. Mm -hmm. So it, it just becomes. And it, it, and the thing that I, I wanted to share with you is I, I I wonder how many of our our department heads at times are doing that, buying things uh, just because they can't go to that credit card limit. They're just buying things from vendors that um, are a lot higher price because they'll charge because there's only a few that actually do that anymore. Uh, you don't have a lot that actually use it just basically the credit cards they use just for maybe for <coughs> room in the motel or something like that if they're on a meeting or something like that. Most people don't charge that for what Most okay. don't do that. Well, I, I didn't know if, if in the future that you might want to think about that. Uh, a credit card could be in the clerk's office that when you're doing a project that it could be a project card that um, well, can't take, can't can't run into the complications of, of going over going over the limit. Can't you go ahead and just, I mean, most of them go ahead, and, it's like the vouchers that we approve and that they pay if they've got something that they can you know purchase. You mean, uh, just have the, uh, have just get an invoice. Do you know the it? amount of oh, what okay. your chairs are going to be? Mm -hmm. They have bills. Yeah. I, I suppose like like this one was a sale, so it's kind of bad on that. I mean, uh, I could I could actually pay the full price, I guess, which would still be better than going through through a charge vendor. I guess that's my point. It's it, it's still better than going through that route. But they can't just send us a bill. I mean, nope, they don't do that. <laughs> it's not like we're, we're probably going for it. That's what I did with Lowe's to get the table. The county, so the county has just say we don't. The has the lowest card. Commissioners know they have one because we have. If we go to the meeting or something, then we just put it on our own card. I can get you one. Well, and, and I, you know, the, the smaller amounts aren't aren't too bad, but uh, you know, most folks aren't going to want to put a nine hundred dollar, mm -hmm. you know, charge on their personal credit card. I, I don't know. It's, it's just something to think about. But but keep that in mind because I I think at times on on bigger project type things that um, what I found is that I've got to wait till one clears and, and then I put another one on and, and so trying to you know trying to run a, a it's twenty five thousand dollar project, project it's not is not like the like down to the county at the at the road bar you know they everything's just through a voucher they get, get your stuff every month if they go buy it and, and we they get a voucher for it and we we send the money. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they wouldn't do like that. That's what I got said. They can't just build county. 
I mean, you're dealing with some of these big box stores that they, they don't have the policy flexibility. Yeah, they don't have much flexibility, and their workers are kind of. So these things are on sale now. Nuts! It's over with now. <laughs> <laughs> just like till Saturday. Uh, yeah, it was just till Saturday. But but that was the problem that I ran into. I, I mean, I could have saved a substantial amount okay. on sale. Well, maybe they have it online. They could. Have. I'll check that. But, that's that's all I had. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Okay, we'll uh, recess. We have ten minutes. Here. I'm lying. There's tomatoes out there. Let's grab a handful. She's got plenty. Of them. We had 18 tomato plants, and all of our tomatoes get to the three tomatoes were disappearing. We couldn't figure out what was happening to them. Then we started seeing them in the trees. The squirrels were taking them up in the tree. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> My husband hasn't been dead, I guess, the squirrels now. <laughs> well, my name is Janet Murray. So I'm excited to be able to provide you all with a quote this year with Blue Cross. So it's been a few years since you've had Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So I think I look back in the records and it's like 90. Three or yeah, something, maybe something like that. Maybe in the 80s. So, so does that mean we'll get that year's price? On <laughs> well, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> we could go back and turn the clock back. and yeah, I, I mean, you were still self-funded, you were just administered, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. That And I, because I think <clears throat> I looked, I was even with Blue Cross back in the 80s. So I, I've been with Blue Cross for 11 years, so I... Haven't been with us since I've been with Blue Cross. But, yeah, and, and this year I'm providing you with a fully insured quote, although we can do self funding. And I have, um, but she said you guys are ready to look at something fully insured, so that's what we're going to show today. And so, do we have a time limit? Um, I'll try to go over all the different benefits of Blue Cross and um, get to go over the prices and the different products we have available, and then we'll have questions anytime you have chime in with a question. Be great. Um, starting with section one, who we are. Um, Blue Cross, and these are trick pages, they open from the inside, so you have to kind of open them backwards. But Blue Cross Blue Shield has been in Kansas since the 1940s, we're almost 70 years old um, this year. And we, um, one of the things that makes Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas unique is we are a mutual company. Now, Blue Cross and Blue Shields, there's many Blue Crosses. Um, they're all part of the association, so we have the advantage of being a part of the association, but the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas itself is its own entity, so it's different than Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas City and Anthem Blue Cross, and there's lots of different Blue Cross plans, but we're our own entity. Um, and we're a mutual company, so we're not owned by stockholders, we don't pay out dividends to um, a lot of the things you're hearing when healthcare reform is that the insurance companies making all the big dividends and the executives, but we are owned by the members, so anytime we do take in extra revenue, then we end up flushing that back out to the members in the um, rate relief when we, when we have that available. So it's not something that we um, pay out dividends to stockholders. And another nice thing is that um, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas, we have very, very, run very efficiently. Our administrative expense is 7.3% for the last, for 2010. So, just have the meeting let out. I'm not going to shut it. I'm just going to shut it enough to keep the rattling out. 7.3% um, is what our administrative expense was last year. And that means that we run for 7.3 cents on every dollar. That's what we charge for my salary for all of the people at Blue Cross and Blue Shield, um, playing the administrative, um, mailing, all of those things, that our buildings and everything are all run under that expense. And Blue Cross and Blue Shield, um, very, um, we're very stable. We've never been in debt. Um, Blue Cross has never taken out loans. We don't pay interest charges on everything we do and do on a cash basis. So, um, very good. Uh, financially stable and we're very good um, corporate community uh, response to a lot of things in the community and for the state and foundation our Blue Cross Foundation also uh, furnishes things like for children and health care and um, 
and the Blue Cross and Blue Shield card is recognized anywhere you take it in the United States and in Kansas. And um, doctors, are, especially in Kansas, are very happy to see the Blue Cross card because we have a very good relationship with the doctors in Kansas and hospitals. And um, we've received, and in the next one under accomplishments, we've received the Provider Award, um, National <coughs> Provider Award, um, three years in a row. Um, providers are very satisfied with the way we process claims and the timeliness in which we do think that and um, efficiently and um, the accuracy that we honor when we provide claims processing. Um, our customer service has won many awards. Um, when people call, when your members would call with a complaint or a question or a claims question, they'll talk to someone in Kansas. They'll talk to either someone in Salina or Topeka because those are our two call centers. And so they, and they always talk to a person. They may have to push a few buttons to get, you know, push in if they're an employer or a doctor or a member, but they will go to a person to talk. They don't have to put their questions in my numbers. So um, they have very low complaint ratios, but very easy company to deal with. I'll go on to section two, um, web, web and what we have available online for your customers and for you. Uh, when I started at Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the only, that was 11 years ago, most of what was on our website was the provider directory. Um, had some contact information. It has evolved, like all websites, um, a lot over the last few years. So this first page kind of highlights what would be available to you um, in a shell that would be needed that would be utilizing it. But all of our applications and our forms are online. All of um, they can go online and view the enrollment and the, who's to make sure everybody's on and been enrolled in the plan. Um, we have health, um, our directory, um, provider directory. Then we also have like newsletters and lots of health and wellness information online for the employer. And then we also have what's called lose and roll. So if you choose, you can actually enroll your members online. So you can go online and um, put the application in and key in everybody's information. And if you go ahead and enroll in our dental and our life, you can enroll them in their health, their life, their dental, everything all at once. Just click the three different things and everything's enrolled and submit the application. It makes it quicker to get the ID cards and it's effective because you can run reports and see who's in what. Um, so it makes it very easy for you to administer the plan. Um, we also have our, the billing is available online. So you can, when you do the billing, you just, uh, do the online uh, sign in and you can run the health bill, the life bill. Uh, usually the li health and the dental are together if you do the, the, both those products. And then the life bill and you can add and adjudicate the bill online and so make it so that you can make adds and deletions and um, then submit your payment like you do your credit card payment if that's how you want to do it. Or you can print the bill and mail a check. So we have companies that like doing it both ways. Um, the newest thing that went electronic for us this year was our electronic um, contracts and certificates. Um, we, it took us four years to get this approved through the Kansas Insurance Department, but now that we've approved it, we feel like this is going to be a huge cost savings for our company because we spent a lot of our dollars on mailing. Um, the required privacy notices and things that we were required to mail, and this was one of them. But now that we can do that electronically, we started this July 1, and we had um, probably tens of thousands of notices that went out to members and instead of getting their ID card and their hard copy contract, which was about 40 pages front and back, little tiny print, um, they could get, I got a postcard that said you can get your contract online or you can mail this postcard back and we'll mail you a hard copy. And we've only had three that have mailed back the postcard that wanted the hard copy. Yeah. So we knew that there were a lot of people that weren't looking at it. And when they do want to look at it, they can't find it, so they just call and order another one anyway. So this, having it at your fingertips, anytime you have access to internet, you as a group can look it up, you as a member can look it up, and, and look up your, what, anywhere you are. And usually when people are thinking about that, they're at work, and they want to just be able to look up something, and so they can log on to the internet, find it, and it's there, and so it makes it really easy for people to access their information on the contract. And if they need a hard copy, they can call and request or mail it in. So that's online for them to do at all times. Section three is another some other online features, and this is our health and wellness products that are available online. And our resource blue is our health and wellness 
um, product um, that's available online. And we, it's powered by WebMD, which is a very creditable source for health and wellness. You know, when you go online, sometimes you don't know if what you're reading is a, is a creditable source. You get lots of help and information. WebMD is a very creditable source, and that's the one that um, provides our definitions and our illustrations and all of our health information. So if people are wanting to go online to find out about a condition that they've been newly diagnosed with or maybe research a condition that they think they may have, they can find information online with um, WebMD, and it's through our website. And we are really trying to uh, provide a lot of health and wellness information for members because we understand that um, one of the things that drives the cost of health care is utilization, of course, and there's a lot of care that is um, that we pay for that is what's uh, driven by preventable or lifestyle choices. I guess that's what the new perk word is. Um, people could, um, if they exercise more, maybe could avoid taking a certain kind of medication or could improve a health condition. And so trying to educate people on ways that they can be healthy is one of the goals and of this information that's on the website. Free to every person that is in your, um, that's on your plan and their spouses, they can go online and take a health risk appraisal, which is like a questionnaire. And it takes about 20 or 30 minutes to complete it, but it does have all the information. Like I, have, I put in my glucose and my blood pressure and my cholesterol and everything and put in just the information that I got from my doctor, plus I answer do I smoke, how much water do I drink, how many vegetables do you eat, day, et cetera. And it gives you a snapshot and an evaluation of where you are standing on your health and what you can do better and what you can, um, and how you're doing. A lot of companies use this as a um, basis for their wellness program. And Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas is my employer. Um, we are required to take this. If we don't take it, we can get we get surcharged twenty dollars a month on our insurance. So it's a way for everyone to come in and become aware of what your health conditions are. Um, we have to do this. We have to do um, a couple other things as far as listen to health and wellness uh, DVDs that are provided. Now we listen to DVDs because we're in Hutchinson and not Topeka. In Topeka, they can go to the actual presentations. But we have several things we have to do in our health and wellness or, or be, uh, pay an extra 20 a month. And um, I think out of like the 1,400 employees, only about 20 didn't do it last year. So sometimes when you're being charged, you'll do it. Whereas if they say you'll give you $25 if you do it, they had not near as many people complete it. But when they said if you don't do it, you're going to get charged, not everybody did it. So. Um, it's just one way that, and they said a lot of things were diagnosed for people. People found out they had high cholesterol and didn't know it. Um, people found out they had high blood pressure and didn't realize it and um, are now on medication. And the goal of that is to take a generic medication or do the healthy walking and things that you need to do to prevent that versus an expensive hospitalization from a heart attack or a, another condition that could result. So just pe making people aware. We also have smoking cessation. We cross the shield is a smoke-free campus, and uh, we are also if we smoke, we're sur surcharged twenty dollars a month. So we could possibly have to pay an extra forty dollars a month on our health insurance if we don't do this and if we don't if we smoke. So it's just one way, and that's an option that a lot of employers are looking at. And so just wanted to make you aware that we have pieces to help you support that if that's something you want to look at as far as trying to implement the wellness program. We have some free things available online. Um, the care management program is the next piece of our health and wellness, but this is included in our plan. All of our fully insured and, and self-funded groups get this uh, feature within their health care. And our care management is run by a staff of nurses, um, and they are looking at helping people manage those chronic illnesses, such as diabetes, asthma, um, heart um, coronary heart condition, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, those things are considered chronic conditions. And they contact members with those conditions and ask them if they want to participate in a voluntary program to monitor, to they work with them like on a quarterly basis. The nurse actually makes a places a phone call to them to help them try to um, manage their condition better. They may not be taking their medication. They notice that um, 
they've been prescribed with a medication that they're not taking it. Um, and so and maybe an asthma patient has been hospitalized or gone to the emergency room three times for an asthma but is not taking a daily inhaler or something that could help them control and prevent those um, emergency room visits if they were taking a maintenance type inhaler. So they work with the doctor, uh, their doctor, and what the doctor's care is and try to help that person um, become compliant with what their doctor recommends to keep them from having more costly um, health care problems. Um, there, this newsletter, there's a story right here on the right hand side on page two, um, the healthy options. This Wichita lady that um, was diagnosed with diabetes and ended up uh, being placed in the um, healthy health care management program and how it helped her manage her diabetes. The, um, diabetic probably is one of our most utilized programs within the system and helps people really figure out how, what they need to do to um, manage with um, diet, exercise. There's so many pieces to diabetic care um, and diet is such a huge part of it and if people don't understand the dieting part then they can have a lot of problems with their diabetes. So. Um, and this Healthy Options is a sample of the newsletter that members get quarterly um, from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, a lot of times it will focus on, there's always some kind of a, a recipe involved that talks about, sometimes it will have health care reform, whatever is pertinent to the time. And so it's something that comes to each member. Now as a group, you would receive what's called Health Plan, and it is a newsletter that goes to the group leaders and it focuses on group changes, and you get that quarterly also. So if there's th new changes with COBRA or new changes with health care reform, things that are pertinent to the group, you get, we provide newsletters for that also on the plan level. And this last brochure is just a sample brochure that goes out. This is for the high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which is the newest um, addition to our care management program. And it's um, we provide these uh, literature to provide to groups if, if you want to put them out for your employees to pick up. Um, they can self-refer themselves into the care management program. So if they've been diagnosed with something and, and maybe have, been, have questions, they can self-refer themselves into the care management program to talk to nursing directly. So that's just some of those information. Section 4, Health Plan. Um, talking about our network. Um, like I said, because we're part of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association, we have the advantage of having a great network, not only across the entire United States, but here locally. We have our own network in Kansas, and we have every hospital in the state of Kansas in our 103 counties that we cover. Um, Kansas does have 105 counties, so I didn't miss that question. <laughs> but two counties, Johnson and Wyandotte, are in the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas City. So in, our, in the 103 counties that belong to Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas, every hospital and those are, are contracting. And we have 98% of the doctors contracting in, in those counties. So you'll look harder finding a doctor that doesn't contract than you will in finding one that does. And so having those doctors within the network makes it easier for your employees. We also have a huge network around all across the United States. And so um, if you have kids in college or um, if you're traveling, um, you also have access to those networks. This next chart that you're looking at, what this kind of explains what these discounts mean to you. Um, because we have um, a network, those doctors have agreed to accept our allowances on certain um, hospital charges and doctor visits. And our average um, across the entire state, if you put all of our um, visits and claims together in one pot in the entire state of Kansas, our average, uh, what we saved in discounts last year was 54% of what the claims were. So that's huge when, because those are claims that if you um, were billed $200, it would only be $104 or $108 would be the, the cost of the claim. So if you're um, trying to save costs in health care, it's important to get those discounts from the doctors. Um, we get as high as 71% off in certain places. Um, so in this area, I feel like you should get about a 40% discount because you're a little bit further from the cities, but we do have good discounts out in Western Kansas. So 
the, the second brochure is blue card, and blue card is um, our our national network, and so it has on our website. You can go online and look for doctors for contracting anywhere in the state or in, in the United States, and all 50 of the states do have contracting providers. Um, when my son was in California for a while, I looked up the doctors. I knew he wouldn't do it. So I looked up the doctors that were close to him to make sure that he had doctors that he could go to um, that were contracting him. Because um, normally, wherever he goes, he needs a doctor because he's one of those accident prone kids. <laughs> so he went skiing three times and came down the slope all three times on a sled. So fortunately, none of more major, but it always never always seemed to happen. Um, the um, also have worldwide. We have over 200 countries around the world that have doctors that contract with the hospital or hospital facilities. And what that means is if you're traveling and you need a doctor, you can on the back of your card you can call the 800 number and they'll direct you to a facility that does contract with Blue Cross. And it also helps you with the translation issue. It helps you um, with your claims and giving you that care that you need. So if you're ever traveling around the world, that, that can be very important. And even in the United States, I mean, you can a little bit easier when you're speaking the same language to find doctors that are contracting, but sometimes when you're traveling that language barrier can be a problem. So. Section five, okay, this is the nitty gritty, this is the rates and our benefits. Now we didn't we have put Blue Cross and the Shield about six years ago went to standard rating packages, which means we refined our benefits down to a certain number of packages to try to keep, help keep our administrative costs down. Instead of off, because we had at one time like 1.2 million different combinations of packages when you added this and this and this with all the different plans. And so we narrowed it down to um, 51 plans that we have available for groups so that we could code, make coding easier because they can put package codes codes in the system and it makes our membership and our systems more efficient this way. And boy, were we glad we had done this when healthcare reform things came out because some of the big headaches of healthcare reform is trying to get the systems coded to accept the changes that they've made. So this has really helped us. So in order to try to find something that was really similar to what you had and try to get the benefits more in line with what your employees are used to, I ran in a couple of different benefits. This is one, and you have very rich, not good benefits for your employees right now. You have a, a low deductible. Um, our average deductible is a thousand dollars, and our average coinsurance is a thousand um, for our members in the state. And you currently have a three hundred dollar deductible and a four hundred dollar coinsurance. So your members are paying way below average for the benefits. So I ran our lowest um, benefit, or our best, richest benefit, I should say. And this is our, called our shared pay option. And you'll see I ran the triple option because there's three options within this one that you can choose from. The only thing different is on option one, two, and three is the amount that you choose as the out-of-pocket for the employee. All the other benefits are the same. So option one would be a $750 out-of-pocket for the member, $1,500 for family. Option two is $1,500 for the member and $3,000 for family. But I'm just going to focus on option one because that's kind of what I did my comparison on yours. And it's, it's called a shared pay because it's immediate shared pay. They don't ever need a deductible. This is just coinsurance. So when they go to the doctor, they pay 50% of the cost. And we pay 50% of the cost until they've paid $750 out of pocket. And once they've paid $750 per person or $1,500 per family, then we pay claims at 100%. So this one because you have 700 out of pocket now, this is my closest I could get to that at 750. Um, this covers all dependents to age 26, which is a which is a mandate of health care reform um, that went into place October of 2010, October 1st of 2010. All groups, actually September 23rd, 2010, and they implemented it to, on anniversary for groups in October. Um, it has an unlimited lifetime max, which is another health care reform. Health care reform allowed us to phase that in. We went ahead and just went through the full right off to the pick up. So it's an unlimited lifetime maximum benefit. And then all services are subject to this 50% except preventive services, which are covered at 100% um, right now. So the member doesn't have to pay the co pay or the co insurance. 
I should say, on those preventive services. So like doctors, um, if they're going in for immunizations for a child, um, if they're going in for a mammogram that's coded as a preventive, not as a diagnostic. If it's a diagnostic, if they found a lump and they're having a mammogram, then it's going to be considered a diagnostic and they're going to pay you 50%. But if it's the due to a preventive services and the doctor codes it as preventive, then there's no charge to that member. And at the very back of this section is the list of services that are considered preventive care based on health care reform as we know them today. There's, it's evolving. There's still things they're adding and changing on that. But that's what we know so far. This also has an accidental benefit, which would have been a good one for my son, because it pays up to 100% of the first thousand dollars of an accident. So if you had an accidental injury, the first thousand dollars is paid at 100%, and then it would go to the co-insurance level. So then they pay 50% to 750 after that. So that first thousand is paid um, at 100%. So if you went at an emergency room visit, it cost two thousand dollars for the visit. The thousand would be free. Then you pay fifty percent of the next thousand, so it'd be five hundred. And so you have five hundred dollars to what you pay. If if, if up to seven fifty. Uh, yeah, two seven, seven fifty. Seven. If you hadn't already met some your deductible, and if if the if that was our allowed charge, um, two thousand was our allowed. If, the, if they oh, billed two thousand, and our allowances said that the doctor has to write off a thousand and thousand is the remaining, so which happens, you know, a full, you don't ever pay the full bill amount. Okay. If your allowed charge is a thousand or less, there's no, there's no right. charge to the person, it's, it's not prorated all right. the way through the right. system. It, it's, it's a, if, if the allowed charge, if it was billed two thousand and our allowed allowance was a thousand for that, then you would pay, you would pay anything. If you hadn't already met, right. Now there is an emergency room fee that I'll talk to you about that may come in actually no, not yeah there's an emergency room you pay a hundred dollars for going to the emergency room so that would be um, if it's due to an accident though that 100 comes out of the thousand so um, if, if you didn't have use your so you have nine hundred dollars left in your accident benefit if, if you go to the emergency room and it's due to an accident the hundred comes out of the thousand dollars right unless the allowed charge came in at less than a thousand or less than that, like I said, that or nine hundred or less, because that thousand hundred would come out of the thousand on an on accident visit. The hundred dollar charge in the emergency room is to keep people from going to the emergency room when they could be going to the doctor's office. And you may not have, out here you have a little bit less option because your your emergency room is probably open more than your. In Hutchinson, they have what we call an urgent care that you can go till 7.30 p.m. or you can go on Saturday mornings, and that's just a regular visit. But um, so that's only if it's if it's due to an accident or if you're admitted within 24 hours, they waive that $100, um, or the 100 comes out of the 1,000 on the accident. But yeah, and that's per person on the plan. So if it's a family of five, each person gets $1,000. So it's, so if there are, you know, uh, so it, it's not one a thousand per fam plan. It's a thousand per person on the plan. So, and everything else is pretty much subject to the coinsurance of fifty percent, um, except the prescription drugs, which are separate. And the prescription drug coverage is um, a fifteen thirty forty five copay. And it looks like right now you have a, a fifty fifty. Uh, you pay 50 and the member pays 50. Is that correct? Is that 80, 80, 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20, I'm sorry. But, it, but there's, no, there's no limit on that. Right, I'm sorry. And it doesn't go against down the pocket. Thing. So it's a stuff that's back to the so. This one is a strict copay. So you pay the lesser charge. And the, the nice thing about that is there's some drugs out there, uh, as far as the members involved, and, um, they could, if it's a $400 drug on a 20%, they would pay us $80. Um, but th there's $2,000 drugs out there, so 20% of that can be very costly and might be something that a member may not. But, yeah. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, there's more and more of them all the time. Um, we have, there's one for MS that's now uh, cost $4,800 a year. 48, 
48,000 a year. It's a, um, it's like a, it's a 4,000 a month drug. So, um, the special, we call them specialty drugs or IV therapy. Um, we, we do have them go through a, um, uh, authorization or a qualify, you know, to make sure that that drug is for that treatment of that illness and then uh, to, to prove it. So on the specialty drugs, but um, if it's most of the time, they, you know, they just want to make sure that the doctor's prescribing it for the right uh, illness, but there, there's some of those out there. Um, but this one is $15 for generic, $30 for a formulary, and $45 for a non-formulary. So we have a formulary list, and it's in a very bad um, section um, 9 has our formulary list, and it's in the tiny print. We also have an online, yeah. So we have an extensive formulary, is what this is telling you. And if we made a big print, it would be multiple, lots of pages. But everything that's on this list is either a $15 or $30 copay. If it's not on this list, it's a $45 copay. And so um, the generics are, if it's a $4 generic, they pay $4 for it. Or if it's an $80 generic, they pay $15 for it. So they pay the lesser of the charge of the drug for $15 max. And on the, and so the and online you can see them better, but half, the, the left side of the page, the left side of the column, is generic and the right side of the column is the is the brand name. And um, the 45, if it's not on here, it's a $45 program. The average cost of, um, of the groups I see, the average cost of a generic is um, about $14 and the average cost of a brand name is about $258. Well, you have a lot of $400 to $600 drugs making that $258 average because you've got some lesser expensive, but $248 is the average, so you're only paying $30. So um, it, it is, makes it easier for them to afford to take those maintenance type drugs that are required to take. Um, one thing that's unique about our drug plan is that we have what's called a maintenance list. And the maintenance list is <coughs> so that they can take, if it's a chronic illness, so high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, um, things that they have to take. Um, in, birth control is not considered maintenance because it's not a chronic illness, but the things that they have to take to maintain their health, um, they can get 100 units for one copay. So they can get um, 100, so like for high cholesterol or high blood pressure, you get 100 pills for one copay. So if they take it one pill a day, that will last them 100 days. So they only have to pay a copay every three months instead of every month. So, and the reason we put that maintenance list in place is to try to get those people compliant um, to take those meds to help prevent them from going in for a more expensive emergency room or doctor visits. So um, that's something that you need from our plan. They can all, and the neat thing about that is that's available at the local pharmacy. They don't have to do mail or pharmacy to get that 100 unit supply. So you're, you're able to continue to provide your business to your local pharmacy, which out here in Western Kansas is really important. We want you to use the local pharmacy. We do have a mail order available, um, but it, um, you always promote the, the pharmacy locally if you can. Okay, so that's the shared pay option. And, and like I said, you can take any of the three options. You could take all, you could take just the $750 option, you could take just the $1,500 option, or you could take just the $3,000 option, or you could take all three and offer them as a package and say, we'll pay 100% or we'll pay our percentage of this plan and you can buy up or buy down um, to get a higher, you know, you can pay less premium and get a higher deductible, um, or pay a lower premium and get the lower deductible, or excuse me, Higher, deductible, higher premium, lower deductible, et cetera. So you can offer it that way, or you can just pick one plan and offer that. It's up to you. Um, the second benefit is our, our comp major med plan, which is I have most people on this plan. It's probably my, um, where I have most of my people on. And it's the second. You're the back one. That's it. That's it. And this is called our, um, again, it's, I, I went ahead and showed the triple option because I can show three rates this way. You can pick one, two, or three, or you can offer all three. 
and the first one is a $500 deductible per person and a thousand per family. And then every, all the other benefits are the same, just like the other plan. The only thing different is the deductible level. So option one is a $500 deductible for employee only. Option two is a thousand, and option three is fifteen hundred. And um, so it's a five hundred per person, thousand per family, and then thousand dollars in coinsurance. You pay eighty, you pay twenty until you reach a thousand per person or two thousand per family. So total out of pocket on option one would be fifteen hundred per person or three thousand per family. Now. The, the reason this is a more common plan is because of the office with the copay. I have a lot of groups that have this plan because it's got the major med, which is the $1,500 deductible co-insurance. But then most of their services are going to come at the office visit. So you'll have people that never touch their deductible, but they'll use this $25 office visit copay because they get a $25. When they go to the doctor's, it's a $25 copay, and that pays for their services while they're at the doctor's office, all their standard services. Now, if they go in for to have a mole removed or a wart removed or something like that, then that's going to kick into the deductible on coinsurance. But if it's just a normal office visit, check in, have a cold, have um, you know, sore throat, allergies, whatever, it's $25. And then uh, with each person, they get up to $300 in lab and x-ray. So. Um, when I go to the doctor's office and he tells me to go down and do some blood work or to go do an x-ray of some sort, up to 300 of that's paid for at 100% for me, and then after that it spills over into the deductible co-insurance. So it's always covered, it's just under which benefit is it covered under. So that $25 covers everything, and most people, the $300 is enough to get them through their lab and x-ray. And especially when you have the preventive care for mammograms and those things, that takes up a lot of the because mammograms and colonoscopies, those are the things that would be expensive lab work and or lab and x-ray type services, and they would fall um, in the preventive if it's a preventive care. So, so this has a higher out-of-pocket for the member, but they have that $25 office visit copay to take care of them when they go to the doctor's office. Preventive services are still at 100%. It also has a $1,000 accident benefit, just like the other plan did. And there's still that hundred dollar charge if you go to the emergency room. But again, if they go to urgent care or if they go to, in, in Hutchinson or if they go to like the Walgreens that have the urgent care, I know you don't have those out here, but if you have people that are you have kids in town, um, that's a twenty five dollar office visit, and, and it's not a hundred dollar. Or it, there's no specialty um, copay or anything. Um, and then this also has the same prescription drug card, which is. Um, the 15, 30, 45, so it has the same drug card. And something else different about our plan than what you have now is it uses a four-tier benefit rate, which means you have employee, employee child, employee spouse, employee family. And right now you have two tier words, employee and family. So um, when I ran the rates that um, you're currently um, allowing, and I don't know if you're, um, what you're funding, you're self-funded for, um, if you're, if I, when I ran those rates and put these in, it looks like we were saving on off the single option. I ran just the 750 shared pay. Um, the cost to that would be 564,930 per year, and the cost on the single option on the $500 option here is 543,000 a year. And it looks like you're currently funding at 701,000. So um, we're quite a bit cheaper as far as um, what either one of those options and I think one of the reasons we can do that is because of our discounts that we have great discounts available and so our funds that helps us a lot. Um, any questions on the health stuff so far? Um, section six is our dental and I ran two different dental plans, and I went ahead and put our, our big one on top. Um, this is our premium plan. This is the one I've had forever. My husband works for the City of Hutch, and um, I work for Blue Cross, and we, uh, both of our plans have this one. And it's a really good dental plan. Um, it's 100% um, payment on cleanings, exams, um, fillings, um, simple extractions, 
all, the, all the primary and preventive services are paid at 100%. And then the major services are 50%. You get 50% coverage for crowns, bridges, um, onlays, and those things. You get the 50% coverage. Um, and there is not, not a max on this plan. So a lot of plans come with a, uh, I think your current plan has a 500 max on major. And then the, the another plan I'm going to show you is a $1,500 max on all services. And this one doesn't have a, a max on it. And this saved us one year because my husband had three crowns in the same year. And his bill was 3500 3, and we paid 900 because it was 600 per crown and we paid 300 for each crown. So um, it cost more than my daughter braces that year. So. And, and so it has, again, a four-tier benefit. So the rates are, are higher than what you're paying currently, but it is a much richer benefit than what you're currently getting. And dental care is one of those things that is really important. Good dental hygiene is, has been recognized and there's a lot of things written and studied on it that it can, um, a lot of infection and a lot of things start with dental care. And so it's really important for those people to have that good dental care. And this doesn't limit you to two cleanings a year. You can get three or four, whatever your doctor recommends that you get. The second plan is the um, all preventive services are paid at 100%. Primary services are paid at um, 80%. So simple extractions, fillings, those things. You have a $25 deductible, and then you pay 80 and they pay 20 And then major services, once the deductible is met, they pay at 50%. And, um, and then there is a $1,500 max on these. And our dental plan, we went ahead and left dependents to 26 on that also, even though we weren't required to, just because it made it easier administratively mm -hmm. to do that. So it does bring it down the cost a little bit, but between the two plans, um, there's not a lot of different costs. And you're saving a lot on the health coverage, so you might be able to you might like a little bit better dental coverage. Um, section 7 is our life proposal. And I went ahead and matched your current uh, 25,000 um, coverage is what you're getting now. And I think this is kind of what started the whole process in the first place is we came in with a quote for you on your life um, before and wanted you to try to look at us for that. So I was glad that it was a chance to help too. But um, 25000 in coverage and that's $7 per person per month. And that's a double. Um, that's the maximum that I was going to admit. So if it's due to the maximum of that, that's double. So that'd be 50000 if someone buys the maximum of that. Um, there's also a living benefit attached to this, which means um, if they have a different terminal illness, they can um, get a portion of their benefit paid prior to death to help with hospital costs or help with um, wellness or to help with the costs for the family or they're having problems with the maternal illness. I also put down here at the bottom, and this is a non-contribute at the top part, so that would be 100% of your employees that are eligible would be under this plan. But I, I put a non-contributory -con benefit down here at the bottom, which would be an optional benefit. And that would be, if you want to put that on there, it would be, you would decide yes or no whether you want to offer that and allow employees to, to enroll. And then we'd need 75% of the employees to enroll in it, but it's a, a $5,000 benefit on the spouse and children. And it would cost $2.70 per family. So whether they had one child or 10 children, or just a spouse, um, it would be two seventy dollars per month. And they would get 5000 their spouse and 5000 on each child. And again, that would be double if um, due to an accident of that. So that, that's an option you can add um, if you want to. But it, I didn't put it down as company pay if we put it, if you wanted to pay for that method, it would be a little bit cheaper because it would have been everybody in the car. Section 8 is something I stuck in here um, because it's something I've been showing to a lot of groups and had some. A lot of interest in. Do you have a VA uh, employee assistance program? No. This is um, our employee assistance program. We partnered with New Directions, which is, is, is 
started by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas City, who partnered with them and, um, to put together a good EAP program. And an EAP program is a, a great benefit for the uh, employer and the employee. And this also helps keep costs down on your health plan because it includes um, counseling cost visits. Um, it includes six visits for counseling for your employees per incident. So if you have an employee that needs counseling, instead of it, it can go, it will go against this plan instead of going against your health plan. Um, but it's this is not just about um, counseling. This is about um, if you look on page six or page five, it talks about the employer services. Um, if you have people that you're working through issues um, at work with, if you're having um, substance abuse problems or if you're having um, uh, maybe just an employee, an absentee problem with an employee, this gives you a person to call um, 24 hours, seven days a week. You can call and talk with an HR type uh, counselor person that can help you work through counseling issues. You can mandate and ask that this employee go to counseling if you're having problems with someone with maybe with substance abuse. Um, and then this counseling will pay for it. Um, they would go to these six counseling sessions and help you get that person through the process. And they, they say 80% um, of the time the results are either the employee that they're having trouble with gets his act together and gets, it takes care of it, or it, it gives you a way to get them out of the system because they're not, they're not willing to change. And you've done kept legally done what you needed to do to help them to get through and if they couldn't then help you get them out of the system if that's the other option. Um, they say that um, many of the, so they also besides them just counseling for that type of thing, they have financial counseling, they have um, family therapy counseling, there's lots of different things that are going on with families. They, you know, the stress is one of the big drivers of absenteeism and problems at work. And if you can help people with stress, then it's one way to keep your people um, at work and happy and um, more productive. And so the, uh, the services, I think on page um, page 12, they said 51% of the people are psychological and emotional, 19% is marital and family, and 15% is financial that call in and request services. So this is a hotline that employees can call financial problems, if they're having other things to help, someone that will help them walk through and do some counseling with them. Um, we also, a piece of this is you can add health coaching to it. So you can buy it with or without health coaching. And the health coaching will help them, uh, it can help with um, not just um, weight, but um, stress issues and then, you know, exercise and I can actually have a lady come out and give you a lot more in-depth detail about this program if you're interested, and I'm not telling you well enough, but the, um, there, there's lots of posters and stuff you can put up for your employees, so they have a confidential, they can call confidentially and talk to someone and request for help, and it, on page 16 is the full list of everything that comes with the plan, so they get a um, 24-hour a day here that they can call in for hotline for help for on, on the telephone help or they can get counseling sessions six um, face to face counseling sessions for, for each employee per incident so if they have a couple different things that happen throughout the year they get that six times each incident um, the health coaching is optional legal and financial services online there's a free will online that they can fill out um, so there's some other services on um, like guardianship papers, there's rental papers if you're a renter, and what, so there's lots of legal documents online that they can take advantage of. Um, there's crisis management, there's on-site if you have a, a crisis here at work, some an employee death or a, a, a tornado or something come through, you can ask for someone to come on-site and do counsel, counseling on-site. And it, this includes someone coming out and doing on-site training for four hours per year. So it can be on um, crisis, or you can even have them come out and do time management. There's a whole menu of services on 19 that you can have them 
stress the relaxation techniques, lots of things you can choose from. You can use uh, um, for seminar type things for your employees. And the price of it is there on page 16. Um, with the with the help counseling, it was um, 18 to 20 per year. And without the help, or excuse me, without the help counseling, it was 18 to 20. With the help counseling, it's 1940. So it doesn't add. It only adds $120 or a year to add the help coaching on them. But I wanted to include that as an option for you also. Um, you're looking at the page that shows that there's eight counselors within 30 miles. I'm assuming that's probably Great Bend, um, and eight within 40, which would include Hutchinson. So uh, those that would be the face-to-face -face counseling sessions. Okay. Now I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. all that with one mouthful. That's pretty good. I can talk really fast. My first question is, will you administer COBRA? Yes. The COBRA administration and all that comes in with this. So you would need to we just let you know. And then their application that says these are the rates and you're eligible and then you have to sign off that you gave them the COBRA form. And then they send it to us and we bill and we um, provide all notices after that. Um, we provide the ongoing um, privacy notices and the ongoing when they quit payment, then we there are other options for um, continued coverage and all the notices out there. So once you give them the COBRA paper, then you're done. Except if you change the next year, the premium prime change, you need to let them know. Do you have anyone currently on COBRA? Yes. But we'll be off on uh, three days. Oh, that's three right. Days. August. Yeah, that's right. I remember. So these premiums are based on 55 lives? Um, yes, actually 46 enrolled lives, yes. which you have. Mm -hmm. And based on the claims data, of what um, she provided me with data for the last three years. So we have, um, they usually give the heaviest weight to the, mid, the full year that you, 2000 and they go, they go back and they give the most credit to the full year that you've got in place. So even the year before this, that they look at the heaviest because you've still got claims coming in for this year. And this would be any claims incurred for um, starting January 1. Now, I, I know you're on a fully insured contract now, so you've got, you'll have some claims that will still continue to come in um, from your old plan that you'll still be self funded if you change that you still have some claims run out that you'll have obligation for under your current plan. But does it make any difference if you have more lives to cover? The, it, these, the rates, these rates will stay unless there's a 20% change. So if you hire another 10 people, if you double it to 100 people, we pre rate, just give you a different rate. Then Would it help our rates? Um, usually, the more people you have, it helps predictability more than price. I mean, price, big groups don't necessarily have cheaper rates, they just have more predictability because actuarial tables are based on, you know, the likelihood of it happening. And so the more people you have, the more predictable it is. Um, but more people doesn't always mean cheaper. It, uh, but it depends on if you hire 50 more really, really healthy people or if you hire 50 Right. Well, obviously, we're shopping.
in order to have all the cards and contracts delivered to you um, before January 1. We don't want to say 30 days, but because it's January, I, I would say at least 45 days out would be good to have all the decisions and everything turned in and done. So November 1 would be my ideal for getting, uh, have meetings done yeah, and, sign and, start and, and start moving by November 1 would be good because and, and any earlier than that is just a bonus because at this time of year is our business. We enroll about half of our business in January and then the rest of it's throughout the rest of the year. So it's everybody, the peak is busier, everyone's busier, so the sooner we start on it, the better. But, but so if you get everything decided and start holding meetings by November 1, that would be the best scenario. And in October would be really good too. Starts getting busy in November for the holidays. People start looking different in November. Yes, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you can't spend any more money because you've got to pay for the other. Can we get a copy of this? Sure. I actually have two. So I don't even have that. I just need. Yeah. And, and, and what I did there was I, I ran based on what. Uh, that's the dental. Right. Oh, that's. I guess I don't have two, but I've got one. I didn't have one. Okay. This was the dental. Um, and based on what you are currently paying for oh. dental and what our option one dental and our option two dental, the total cost of option one, um, which is the comp dental with the 1500 max, actually option two, twisted the trail, is 35000 and the premier dental is 40000 So, Thank you. Well, I'd sure like to answer questions if you have any, if you've had a chance to review. <laughs> Do you have a lot of other presentations coming up here soon? No, not really. What more than that? Okay. Well, um, let me know and I'll, when would you like me to check that? Give us a couple weeks in the Oh, at least. About Maybe a month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My card's in the front of the book. Got it. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Bye bye. Carolyn.
the thing there is we want their email addresses right. so that we can continue to promote things throughout the year. Things like even Jubilee is so far away from now, it may be hard to get people to you know come when it's so far, but we can, we can email things throughout the year and we'd also like to do a survey at some point, something simple, but something that tries to quantify what the impact is of the booth by asking them, did you come to Stafford County? How much money did you spend? Um, what did you do while you were here? And did you tell anyone else about it? And just, you know, four questions or whatever. But we need their email addresses to be able to do that, and that's what's required for the drawing. So that's not what, Doesn't Maxville have some? Mm -hmm. they, have a, they have a couple things over there. Uh, they have their rally in the valley. Yeah. No, that's not a Maxwell. That's that was here this year. Maxwell does something with motorcycles. They, they, have, a, they have a kind of thing, too. Yeah, they have the flights and blues oh, thing that Overby puts on. Yeah, but they do something earlier in the year, like in May, I want to say. I'm not a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bikers and blues thing that Overby puts on, I think. Yeah. Is that um, Rhea Overby? Yeah, it's Rhea Overby. Yeah, it's Rhea Overby. Yeah. Like we do, like the other towns. Yeah. They learn stuff. They'll have one coming up here well, next week or so. Next week, yeah. 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 our, our goal was to lessen the clutter. I and, and I don't think, I don't have any problem with, you know, a couple of three, four brochures, but it, it got to the point where it was, it was totally out of control. The things now, like Pelican Peaks, if I hadn't been a local, I would have had trouble even finding out who to contact yeah. to get the free tickets. You know, I mean, so if you were coming from out of town, I really don't think... Well, well there's a meeting, there is there. a meeting on Thursday about that, so... In the advertising and, and all that. And that's enough of a proximity to this right. that people might actually, I mean, that's my own speculation, but they might actually act on something to buy right. tickets if we... And we do have an adequate number of staff visitors' guides, so... We do. <laughs> We're so, done with Palette 1 now. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyway, so, yeah. Um, uh, I will continue. I would think, you know, a, a little trifold for each of those. And I've got some little plastic holders that they bought, I think, when they yeah. first started. Well, I think I if that would help. Like, Bike so. and Hike has done just a, basically a postcard, you know. But, but if you I think it's kind of display yeah. them, I do have some of those little plastic. Little organization uh, yeah. doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah but, exactly. But, uh, yeah. I just can throw them out there on the table, that's what. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But, the reason why we're still involved in it is because, you know, the fair board wanted to know if we were going to have the exit or the space. So, but I think whatever the your board decides is it's fine. Okay. It's just that, um, like I say, up until last year, it was it was totally out of control. I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, for that, uh, that's actually number four. The organizational thing, but I'll skip down to it since it's kind of related, I guess. Um, I'm beginning to get things mailed to me, things like from Small Business Development Center or, I don't know, um, even just like the, the visitor's guides and so forth. It might be nice to have something in the lobby where we could for, um, display those types of um, literature. Mm -hmm. I found one that's well within our, our budget, but before I put fixtures in the lobby, not a picture okay for you guys too. It, uh, the one I found is kind of, it's, oh, I mean, it's, uh, it's laminate, but it's, I think it's a color that fits with, it's a little lighter than this, but um, it fits with that. It's about this high. And is a brochure a rack? It's a, it, it can adjust to accommodate um, eight and a half by 11 or like tri-fold. Um, and I, I forget it holds more than what we have right now. <laughs> it's like $150, so it's a little bit No, we're going to have to do something with the lobby and 
hopefully by this fall we'll come up with some kind of an idea of it. You'd be okay with me buying yeah. a brochure rack and yeah, putting one there? Okay. Well, it's all right. Put it in the lobby. No. The lobby of the annex? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, the nonprofit, we're moving ahead with the, the legal um, paperwork there. We had um, gotten um, some competitive bids um, before we, we chose um, an attorney. Um, her name is Susan Lund, or Whitfield Lundgren. And she came recommended from, um, oh, some uh, people that work with her at Golden Belt Community Foundation, the Kansas Association of Community Foundations. She, she has an expertise, I think, in nonprofit. Um, legal work. Um, she and, and, and I think the board decided that it was um, worthwhile to work with someone with that kind of nonprofit expertise to get things established in the first place, and then maybe on ongoing. We, we, she's she's from Lindsburg. We um, want, you know had this discussion about keeping our work local. Decided that maybe it would be beneficial to get the legal framework set up by someone that has a specific expertise in that. And then ongoing basis with our yearly filing of the 1099s and so forth that we'll work with local um, accountants or attorneys or whatever. Um, she, when we had our discussion here, I, and I look back at the minutes and you guys gave us a specific authority for a C6 and I did talk a lot about a C6. That was what, at the time I was gathering that information, I was getting a lot of coaching that that was the, <laughs> the a lot of economic development groups go and it is true. She says that in Stafford County, though, that because we you know, kind of fed her several of the types of statistics that she's asked for, for example, we have a poverty rate that's twice the height or twice the rate of, it, of the state of Kansas as a whole. Um, we have uh, over half of our kids on free and reduced lunches. We have, you know, that the population decline. There's a lot of different indicators that give sufficient justification for this being charitable. If we were in Johnson County, economic development is not charitable. In Stafford County, you can make the argument that it is. So she's guiding us toward a C3 because a C3 is, it has to be charitable or educational. And um, it's a, probably a more assertive it, it, um, approach, I think. We can do more. I mean, we, we would be able to do all the activities under a C6, but also a few other ones. Like, for example, um, I'm working right now with uh, the awning application for the chamber, I'm working through Main Street because the chamber doesn't have a C3 designation. Mm -hmm. Main, Main Street, Street does. Yeah. This would be one of those examples of where we wouldn't have, have to, so we could, but we wouldn't have to work with a partner and organization in some of those kinds of applications. So, I just want to make sure that, especially since well, the, the minutes did say C6. C6. Um, a C3, if an individual made a contribution to a C3, then they were able to deduct it. Right. Um, I know that, like, um, what is it, Perry RCD or whatever it's called, is a C3, and a lot. You know, money is funneled through, and then they, of course, charge you know a nominal fee to, to administer that contribution. Right. And, uh, One of the other things that, and I'm going to tell you where I got it from, it was Christy Tustin at Gold Belt Community Foundation had told me that you couldn't lobby under a C3 position. And I think she used the word as prohibited, and I think I interpreted that to say expressly prohibited. It is limited, and um, and her her legal style is also pretty conservative. She would probably there were you know she would she would just guide you way away from something where um, Susan Lundgren tells me yes it's limited, but unless you're like spending half of your time doing that, which I'm mean, spending half of our time doing that, that you won't have any problems. You know she. Can't, you can't 
So that was one of my concerns. That was one of the things that guided me toward that idea of C6 to begin with. Yeah. What's, what's the board's feeling? Um, I, I think that, well, in fact, we, I'm trying to remember what we, we discussed the idea that she had expertise in this mm -hmm. and was talking about that when we chose that yeah. person. Um, yeah. I, I think that, even that maybe there was the assumption that that was what we would be pursuing, but I needed to go back and make sure that... Okay. So do we need to amend that? Yeah. So or I you just... I mean, it's... It's up to the board yeah. discretion. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, as long yeah. as we're okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a board opening. Would be a large. Yes. Would you as a Who? Terry. Terry. We're meeting on Thursday. Would you like to have recommendations given to you, or do you want yes. the board to? Do you, have, do you have ideas? I had a couple personally that I was going to, and we were just going. I mean, it's, it's on the agenda on Thursday that if they have ideas, that we'll kind of gather those and. and um, I think it's fine. If you're open to that, or. I, I don't have anybody specific in mind that I would refer, so if you've got some good ideas, I'd listen. Okay. If not, we can come up with people, I'm sure. But, but. There was, is that it? That's all I had. I'm not clear on this, but apparently, uh, Barton County has a plan, and it's about this physical fitness bike trail. Okay. There's, there's grants available if you do this wellness thing, and something was mentioned about you know having that run through Quivera, and but Stafford County doesn't have a plan. That Barton County has a plan. To when these when these monies become available, they're ready to pounce on it. I see. Do you have you heard anything about this? This is through the feds. It's hike and bike, and physical fitness and wellness, and so on and so forth. So okay. I just give you a heads up that, and I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Is that like a bike trail? Some, or? Yeah, that's kind of what she acted like. I know that some places... She started some, at a meeting somewhere. Yeah, or that, for example, Ottawa used the old railroad bed right. to make it a hiking trail, right. and so it's, it's right. coming. You know, we have a, a, an abandoned rail that goes through the middle of the county, but I think that this... The, the uh, statute of limitations has expired on land. They need back land. Right. Right. So, but, and I don't know if they're talking about an all-weather surface for a bike trail or just markers. I, I don't know, but it's something that Barton County has already laid out their plan and their outline in case this money comes becomes available and then they're ready to submit the application. So maybe I would, who did you say? John, the city has mentioned it. So maybe it's just touch base with her. Who in Barton County could she talk to? I, I don't know. I guess you know, Chris Collier. It's one of those things that where in the county, I mean, who's really going to have authority over where would it well, I don't think it'd be I mean, into the wilderness. I think it, there, you know, we do a, an outline like like the scenic byway and 
I don't think you have to have a bike. I think that's what they're going for, though. Is that what that's, I don't that's think? That's what a bike trail, trail is. Yeah, bike. that's the idea with those is to get cars okay. and people separated. Well, but if you know, we get $17 million to do it, then I don't know. I just give you a heads up on it. Something like something I heard. Something about health, fitness, outdoor. Yeah, but I mean, if you were to do that, you really literally need to find the location through. I mean, in, through the middle of the county, wouldn't you? Maybe that's their plan. Maybe they have a route already it's on paper. I, mean, I don't know. But it's just something that came up. And we could use that as a way to get the shoulders put on 281 highways. They have a place to ride their bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> or K-19. Well, K-19. Well, K -19, K -19, right? God, I about caught one that. the other night. It's, it's just terrible. They, they draw it on the map. This is your bike route. And this people, they're just riding away. Come up over the hill, and there they are. Gee, you know it's. And there's no shoulders. There's nowhere for them to go. They got to ride on the. Uh, and they always ride right on the edge, which I guess lets you get around them. But you know, if they were in the middle, you'd look at the truck that would come the other way. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm pretty yeah. fast. Oh boy. So you want to talk to them about Golden Bell a little bit while you're here? What what we learned. Uh, I don't know, what, um, we met with them and I um, shared with them kind of um, what has maybe been done in another county and some, um, some possible sources of improving funds for improving roads, but also that it, for those things it would require an angle of expansion of business or um, capital investment or whatever. I don't think that's what they're looking at doing. Um, Roger had the the background on what's going to happen with the township and um, I don't know <laughs> say other than they, they just had no real concept of the township of what a township was where the county county township economic development the whole thing was news to them as far as they knew the girl was in charge of everything in the county <laughs> they wanted to get her in the pickup and go look at these roads. <laughs> she's that's a township road. I have absolutely no authority. Roger has no authority. You know, it's there's nothing we can really do about it. Yeah, you know, you talked so. about the year that they um, this of the bean lot had put money toward improving the township road with yeah. the township. With the township, yeah. And. Um, and kind of talk to them about whether that they would be willing to voluntarily, you know, make some investment in that. And you know, one of the, if I were to try to think of what angle might be possible, if I, if we could find some low interest loans that might amortize it to a level that they might be willing to invest yearly in, I don't know, or you know, or even sharing it with the township, be amortized. It over a long enough period of time with a low enough level of interest, it might be something that the township and the, the business together could could cover those payments on. They could get the improved road that they are looking for. I, I don't know. We'll just have to do some checking. The, they had also said that a few years ago, the management before them had uh, an idea on the grant source that wasn't necessarily economic development. So I said, if you can tell me what that is, I'm glad to more into that and that's kind of how we left it but they were going you, to yeah, do you remember that at all so i was told by carl i think that you know that they approached the commissioners that we can get these monies and if we can it was through gardens or the place out west the what's it called that gal southwest oh uh, great things development yes they came in here right at the end of the year and had to get all the stuff done before the end of the year and they didn't get it done I don't remember how many years ago that was. Yeah, Two or three. At least. Yeah, probably. Yeah, quite a while ago. Because that was the same conversation that Carl mentioned. Well, why don't you just make a straight road? Yeah, that was at the same time. Had he thought of that? You weren't. I wasn't on there. No. Yeah. But I, the reason I'm aware of it is because Carl was telling me about it. Yeah. 
and uh, because the township and the, and the planning board both. He was, he, and they were under the impression that the commissioners killed it. And I said, no, it, it died here in your office. They were supposed to have worked with that gal, whatever the name is. Patrick Sinatra. Patty. Patty. We never heard any more from them. So I, all I told them was that we would be willing to discuss any ideas that came up with that we were, that the door was not closed to ideas. Certainly didn't make any promises about anything. That we were willing to help if we could. And, and we and we did discuss the township options and stuff. So what Carolyn's saying is that at one point we had an agreement with Merlin that he was going to just every year put so much money to the township that goes directly on his roads. That happened one year. No, Next year, I wouldn't have known that. I mean, you hadn't right. been there to and I'm sure they weren't aware of it, you know. And and it did, it actually worked. We had we were able to take that money and with the township's resources build them a pretty good road and it lasted about a year. And the next year when we needed the rock and the resources again, it was why do I have to build my own road? This is the county's job or the township's job or whatever. And so it never happened again. But at least they're aware of that. And at that time we asked for $10,000 worth. Of, basically he bought $10,000 worth of rock, which was a lot of rock at that time. And the township put it on the road. And I think the county may have even helped us with some Foot or something, I don't know, maybe even got out there with a the grader, I'm not sure. Uh, that was that was whenever it was still here, so I don't think we got that much cooperate. <laughs> but I'm not saying we didn't. Uh, anyhow, it, it was fairly effective, but it was, you know, at the time it was made clear this is something you have to do every year, because it's not a paved road, you're going to have to maintain it. What we did was plant the seed, and I said it'd take twenty thousand dollars worth of rock now, just knowing the price of what this stuff is. This is a, maybe a low interest loan, amortized over thirty years. It wouldn't cost that much more towards purchasing a or helping to pay for a paved road. And uh, Carol made it pretty clear that the, that the paved road going into Calmain is basically being paid for by Calmain. It is primarily a loan. Well, it's, There's some it's, grant it's, money. Two. it's 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 half an economic development administration grant and half a I forget now which one it is. It's small business or what. But anyway. Um, the second one is half grant and half loan. So really it's a twenty five percent loan. I see. And um, and it's in the county's name, but with a private basically a private agreement with the company. The company is making payments to the county sufficient to pay the loan payments. So it's, in the end, no net cost to the county. Right. And the company is having to divvy up the money. And we talked a little bit about, you know, why the roads are like they are in general and where the money is supposed to come from. And I, I don't know, do you think they got understood that basically they don't pay any taxes I for think, the roads? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they when we walked in there, they were like, we're going to go show you these roads, they're terrible, we pay all these taxes, and by the time we were done, they were, I don't know, <laughs> they were pretty discouraged. Well, but I, but I in, in essence, I said your feed trucks generate no taxes. They don't, you know, there's no fuel well, tax, I, there's no property tax, there's no tax. Your cattle went through the whole list, and I said, you're not doing anything wrong or illegal. It's just the way the laws are written. And I don't think they realize that it's a township with a with a budget of whatever sixty or seventy thousand dollars that is responsible for that road. I, I don't I really don't think that they, they realize they have no that it's a township it. system. Right. So what I mean. It takes some more research. Anything else? JD? Oh, Roger? No. Yeah. Adjourn. <laughs>